Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Nice Guy Show. Happy Tuesday. This is normally a Monday thing, but yesterday was a holiday. It was uh, National Go to Vegas and Beat Your Body Up <laughs> holiday. So that's uh, just trying to get loose. I got a chiropractor next to me. Maybe she can help me. My guest this week, uh, my co-host as usual, we have Dr. Michelle Wolford, who is a naturopathic doctor, and I have Kathy McLaughlin, who is a spiritual intuitive. And this week we also have Dr. Sherry Smith here, who is a chiropractor. Yep. We're going to talk about chiropractics. Be exciting, <laughs> exciting stuff. I've never been to one, so this will be really interesting. Let's uh, let's first talk about. No, uh, you finally watched this last night. So, I I'm did. So I did. I watched the it. The Bachelor finale was last <laughs> night, and uh, there'll be a spoiler alert. So if you don't want to know who he picked, just uh, yeah, put it on pause, and we'll get back to it. But, um, yeah, so the, what I found interesting about the show last night is there was, uh, I know you guys don't watch, but I'll explain. There were two <laughs> girls. One was just a real sweet girl, just seemed like an all-American kind of beautiful. She came in on horseback on the first episode. Or, of course oh, her she Her name did. was Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it because was, that's how she gets around town. Right. Yeah. And she yeah. rides a motor <laughs> horse. She doesn't. You don't know that. <laughs> Which, her name's Lindsay. So she was, you know, a doll. Everyone loved her. It was like this is going to be the girl he picked because the other girl's name's Courtney and she is just like, uh, I don't know, Black Widow, I guess would be the best way to describe her. She was mean to all the other girls, very, you know, like, sarcastic and very, um, I don't know, she was out to win. She was ruthless and she would rub their, their nose in at any chance she got. Like, if she got picked, she'd say, oh, I'm winning and you all suck, you all are losing, go home, you're not going to have him, he's going to be mine. She was obviously in it to win it. Wow. So, uh, in the end, spoiler alert, he picks the, the bad girl. Of course he does. I mean, because guys are just so stupid. Well, we okay, so I haven't seen any of this. I don't have a TV. So yes, I, yeah. yeah, but I did watch last night and I psychoanalyzed both women. All right, let's And hear you it. could just watch, like, well, let's start with him. I don't even know his name. What's his ben. name? Ben. Okay. The way that he would kiss the blonde one, Lindsay, I guess it's is her like name. It's like a horse eating notes. Yeah, yeah. He was like, mm, he was like, he's like, he couldn't do it. And then the other one, and she was like totally into him. So yes. every conversation was so like dramatic and like loving and like confession and like, oh my God. And then the other one, she kind of did that whole like hard to get, standoffish, like I'm too cute, always look at me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's that's what he got hooked. I he think. just um, he, very my my analysis. He's a really smart guy. He's a very successful guy, but he just doesn't have the right eye for women. He's mm -hmm. he's looking for one thing in a girl um, physically, and I think it's overriding what he's looking for, you know, in the total package of a woman. Yeah. Um, but comparing the two, I don't even think they even. Compare. I mean, I, I don't know them. We just know what we see on the show. And obviously, sure. the show producers dramatize the whole thing. They make <laughs> it look like it's ten times worse than it really is. But, uh, yeah, he picked her. And then, see, the interesting thing about the show is that the contestants don't get to see the show as it's going on. So he doesn't see the way she's acting around the other girls until after he's already proposed to her. Uh -huh. So he's asked her to marry him. And So they actually he, get married. Well, they, he proposes. They don't actually get married on the show. But he proposes on the show. So he's going to marry this girl. Obviously, supposedly, and then uh, they, scary. He, yeah, no after kidding. like six weeks, then you get home and watch after the show. After six weeks, and then, you then he's going home and he's watching the show and he's going, "Oh my god, oh what my did god. I do? Look at this girl, she's crazy." So Oops. yeah, he couldn't handle it, and he basically just disappeared and didn't have any communication with her for a couple of weeks. And you find this out in the after show that he just totally shut down, didn't want to even talk to her because he was, was seeing the way she was acting. So did he call it off? Um, or are they going to work? Things well, they out? kind of broke it. <laughs> It's what you said. They've invested it's, so they, much time. They kind I mean, of broke it off. And then in the, in the after show, of course, they bring them back on the show together. And she's not wearing her engagement ring. And Chris Harrison, the host, has the ring in his jacket. And they're like, yeah, you know, it's still on. We're just, you know, we're working through this. And they're both crying and, and just so hurt about all the media attention and how cruel the media is to her and, and him for picking her. And, and I'm like... This is what's insane about what you're saying right now. You went on the show to get attention from the media. Yeah. You knew that this was going to happen. Yeah. This is why you're there. You know? And then when you get the attention, you get upset about it and you cry to the media once again. So doesn't about, this happen every single time? Because I feel like you always hear like... Yeah, it's, it, there's always... Well, I mean, that's what makes interesting TV, creating the drama. If it was right. just, you know, like... You know, if there was nothing uh, dramatic about it, then they would definitely not have a good show. They wouldn't be able to sell it and have okay. millions of Americans watching it. Okay, so I'll start crying in here, and uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> and just, you'll be a star. I'll, be able to a ABC I'll pull your hair while no one's looking. Yeah. Yeah. ABC will pick Beat you, you up. up. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go from that. One thing I did notice last night, and it could be, you know, that uh, Courtney's going through so much with the media attention that she looked very, very thin and frail. 
So um, let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about eating disorders, and I'm not saying that's what she has, but okay. uh, I know you have a lot of experience with that, both of you, right? Yeah. So um, all right, first of all, explain to me the difference between anorexia and bulimia. I should know this. I don't know. Though. Okay. So people that are anorexic typically are starving themselves of food. So they're not eating. Okay. And the people with bulimia tend to binge with a lot of food and they end up purging it. So they want to get rid of it. Um, they force themselves to throw Yep. They force themselves to throw Stick their finger throw. down the throat. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Why, how could you do that? Yeah. I don't know. But you know, but people I have a vomit phobia. I haven't thrown up in 17 years, so that wouldn't work for me. Yeah. <laughs> you just... Mm -hmm. Actually, the Romans did it quite well. Really? With feathers, their whole society was kind of based feathers? on gorging and then purging. Absolutely. Really? I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. Wow. So it actually dates back quite a, quite a while. But that's really fascinating to me because, you know, back in the Roman times, if you were big and plump, I mean, it was a sign of wealth. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know why they would... Because they wanted to eat more. Yeah. yeah. So they just didn't have the room for it. It wasn't yeah. like they wanted to be skinny. They yeah. just wanted to eat more. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. Jeez. So this is normally just a body, a body image issue, right? Well, it could be a lot of things. Body image issue, control issue, a way of like releasing extra energy. I mean, I don't know the approach that you take with it, but I kind of get into like miasmatically, so somebody's immune system and temperamentally, like what is going on in addition to their entire life experiences that would, you know, send somebody down a path where that would feel healing to them. Because mm -hmm. it is a disease and they feel it's healing to them in the moment. I'm not saying, suggesting that it is healing or that it's good, but right. to them, mm -hmm. it does something for them or they think it does something for them, which is why it becomes addictive. Jeez. So Kathy, what do you do when someone comes to you and has an eating disorder? I mean, how do you support that? How well, you, you go, I mean, to the root cause. What's making you starve yourself? What's making you hurt yourself? Why? Where did this come from? I find a lot, especially with anorexia, um, a lot of sexual abuse. Really? And wow. everything yeah, felt so that. out of control. Mm -hmm. And so in one way, it's a way of getting rid of their feminine, you know, not having the curves, not having the breasts, not having the hips, getting to where they they're, they don't see themselves as sexually desirable, see, it feels safer. And two, it's something they can control, mm -hmm. what they eat or don't eat. And so when there was no sense of control growing up or being violated in that way, it's a way of saying, well, this is something I can control. Hmm. Wow, that's it. it's scary. It's sad. It I is. guess there's a lot of it around, though. I mean, I... I I can't tell by looking at a person, obviously. I was just you know, making funny about Courtney. But, I mean, you can't tell by just looking at someone. Anyone could possibly be suffering with this. Absolutely. Not yeah. to mention the media does not help. It no. just does not help. I mean, Because they see all the pretty pictures and well, magazines yes. and everything. And it's, yeah. What about, you know, back to Marilyn Monroe, it's a size 14, and that was considered sexy. And now it's like a zero. <laughs> Okay. Why is there a size zero? Right. Is zero should be nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You don't need clothes. You don't need clothes. You, don't need clothes. <laughs> you are so, a razor blade. So that's yeah. scary. Huh. Wow. All right. So um, well, what do you do medically about it? Is there anything? I do a lot of mental emotional support, which I'm sure you do as well, obviously, mm -hmm. being a therapist. Um, and then it is sometimes about getting things in like shakes where they don't feel like they're eating a lot of food. They don't necessarily get maybe the, the bloating or the fullness feeling, but they're still getting some nutrients in. They're getting constant caloric intake. Um, so that's usually where I start is things like that. But again, it depends on the varying degree of where they're at in their stage of bulimia yeah. or anorexia. I mean, if you have somebody that hasn't eaten food in, in days and is, you know, 80 pounds and needs IVs, I mean, that's not the that's type different. of patient I'm working with. Right. You know, they're usually in some sort of a treatment center. Mm -hmm. But you have somebody that, you know, maybe was at that stage a couple of years ago and, you know, every now and again they purge maybe like once a month or they'll go like through a phase for like three days they won't eat or they get obsessed with like a cleanse or something. That's usually where I can get into more of the mental, emotional aspect and then how can I support them physically. Okay. Yeah. Also, you met, you brought up cleanse. That's a good thing to talk about too. So, yeah. are you actually you're actually going through a cleanse right now? Yeah, start start, I just started today. Well, my patients and I started <laughs> March first, uh -huh. and then traveling with the baseball team actually right. <laughs> got a little hard. But so no, I'm <laughs> yeah, here. You're not gonna cleanse in Vegas. Yeah, so I know, like right? <laughs> like, so I'm here for three weeks <laughs> yeah. with no travel, and I'm like 21 days to form a habit. You know, I'm just gonna kind of get back to my normal routine and just take care of my body. Just. Get rid of stuff cellularly. So you're not doing the ri ridiculous cleanses that I hear about where you, you just drink apple juice and, and these what, silly oh, like the or whatever? Oh, the you're thinking just... of, okay. So there are so many cleanses out there. Right. The master cleanse is the one where you're just drinking, uh, I think it's like lemon juice with cayenne pepper yeah, and yeah, some yeah. honey. Yeah, yeah. And that's all you do is just drink fluids for like 10 days. Um, 10 days. I don't uh, prescribe to that. Why? Because I think getting food and nutrients is important. Okay, obviously. You know, cleansing is... 
not always about just taking food out of your diet. It's about adding some things in and then, or replacing things is what I like to say. So taking some things out and adding some things in. So people that drink beer all the time, sometimes they're addicted more to the sugars and carbonation. So I'm like, well, let's do carbonated water with a little bit of honey and lemon. Mm. You know, let's take away some of the inflammatory foods and replace them with something that can stimulate like phase two detox in your mm -hmm. liver. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just about changing a, a habit, like some, some other random habit in your life or, um, just a way of thinking or, you know, clean your closet out or, you know what I mean? So no, but I've heard about these cleanses that people take that, I mean, it actually gives you the runs. You just clean your body out basically. Yeah. And, and, you know, they're like, oh, you won't believe what comes out of you when you, when you go through this. I'm like, well, it's probably some good stuff coming out with the bad stuff, I would think, right? Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know if, if I would ever do a cleanse. I've, I've been tempted to, you know, try like a, a three day one, maybe just to see what it does. But, well, you, you can know. do cleanses too where you're like, you know, we talked about this on the first episode, maybe just taking gluten out of your diet for three weeks. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, that's just a very inflammatory food. Yeah. Right. Or what are the three things that cause, uh, that are self-destructive in your life? Maybe you, you drink too much or you right. over-exercise. I or... do. I do both. <laughs> when we come back next segment, we'll, we'll start to talk about chiropractics and I'll learn all about how to fix myself and how you can fix me. Great. Be right back. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 